Hey everyone, this is the first headphone video I've done. I wanted to do this video at my desk with the nice uh, Yeti that I'm talking into right now, but while I was setting up and getting the camera angle right, my tripod broke. So it was kind of stitched together and propped up against a lot of things for this video, but as a result, it had to be done at my uh, bedroom desk, which meant I had to use uh, an an earpods microphone to record the audio. It doesn't sound terrible, but it's not as good as I might have liked. So, just a fair warning on that one. Enjoy the video. Oh, look at this. It's my desk. Well, my bedroom desk. You've seen this before. Hello, here's my hand. I bought some headphones this year and I want to talk about them because, well, you can see two of them, they're in the shop. So, I have divided these into six, basically six categories. And it's not necessarily good to bad, although there are some that I think are really good and some that I think are bad enough to be worth noting. Hey, look, it's my dongle. But these are tiered more due to interest. So, like I said, some are good... Some are bad, and then there's some that are just not that interesting. So that's what I'm going to show you first. The stuff I bought this year that I don't think is particularly interesting. Even though neither of these are bad. And the two I have here are the AirPod Pros and the KVE KS2s, which my thumb is over. There's the AirPods. So... Neither of these are bad. Okay, that's KS twos. Neither of these are bad. Obviously, they're just like you don't need me to say anything more about them, except to say that I bought them this year. AirPods, they're you know they sound good. The noise cancelling is great. They're super convenient. The case is nice. Like they are, they are just. It's hard to say anything interesting about AirPods. So they sit here in the uninteresting tier. And the KS2s, obviously, you know, kind of been held up for a brief period this year as like the mainstream budget king. But yeah, they are uninterestingly, very generically good. They are perfectly fine. And if they were the only headphones I had, I would be very happy with them. Also, one of the uh, the tip on this side is uh, split, so I do need to get it replaced. But yeah, they are perfectly fine. They're just not interesting. They're not massively good. They're not massively bad. Well, the AirPods are good. The AirPods are very good, but what can I say about AirPods that hasn't been said a million times by other people? And the KS2s, like, they've been very superseded. Like, these live in my work bag as my, like, beta headphones. Like, if, if I'm not keeping an eye on the charge level of the AirPods, if I'm not keeping an eye on the charge level of the AirPods, and they're flat when I go to put them on after work or heading into work, I grab the KS2s. They're always in my bag. They're always there. The dongle is usually in the case. So they're just there and they're good headphones for like walking to and from work. Right. That's the uninteresting stuff done. Now we can move on to some more interesting things. Right, so next are the only pair of headphones in this pile that I bought this year that I actually don't like. And it's these, the KZ DQ6. I bought these on recommendation. There are the actual things. I bought these on recommendation from somebody saying like, you know, these are, these are fun things. And... 
yeah, they are kind of. But I also got another pair literally at the same time as these that I'm going to talk about in a moment that are better and older. These, in my opinion, went backwards. And there's some stuff in them that just sounds absolutely horrible. Like, um, just listening to some stuff on Shuffle and um, Hard Fi came up. Middle Eastern Holiday. Great track off their first album. It sounds horrible through these. It sounds like super scratchy and distorted. And that's just one of those things that makes no sense. Also, I got the mic version and... This plug doesn't work very well in some of the stuff I put in. Like, my iPod didn't like it. Speaking of iPod, look, it's an iPod. My iPod didn't like it. My dongle didn't like it. So, they were just a bit of a faff to use. I wasn't particularly keen on the sound. So, yeah, these just kind of ended up slung, these ended up slung out the way. A shame. I was really hoping these would be like really fun, like super bassy option. And it just didn't work out like that. Okay, so these next three are headphones that I think are good. Yeah, this is no man's land. This is headphones that I think are good, but I have better in the space. So they just kind of sit in no man's land. And playing off the DQ6, the headphones that I think are better than the DQ6 in the same kind of category are in here. The KZ ZSEs. These ones are still in their, these ones are still in a wrapped box. Because I have two pairs of these. Look, here's the pair that they're actually... Here's the pair that I actually used. They are a really weird shape. It's like this really long thing. They're kind of open. Like if you hold the... If you hold this bit to your ears when you're playing music, you can hear the music pretty well. And yeah, they kind of hang out and dangle out a bit. But, yeah, I have better of this kind of headphones. I have better of this kind of thing. So, they live in no man's land. Cable's nice, though. And they've kind of lived here, like, by my bed. Because uh, listening to jazz with these is really good. Like, jazz has been the one thing with these where I listen to it and I was like, these are my favourite headphones for listening to jazz. It's really weird. But yeah, I basically got these for two quid from one of those um, lucky bags that some Chinese manufacturers do around this time. And that's why I got them with the DQ6s. So DQ6s arrived, these were in the bag with them. And when I bought another pair of headphones that I'll talk about in a minute, I got another pair from another lucky bag. So there you go, buy a KZ lucky bag, you're probably gonna get these apparently. The next one, very recent one, the Moondrop Neko Cake. I like these. I think they, I think they look good, except for the actual buds themselves, which I think are extremely bulbous and ugly. Thank you. But yeah, like, I think these are good, and for like, these were like thirty-five pounds for a pair of true wireless. IEMs, but there's a couple, but there's a, a few problems with them. Yes, they sound good, but so do my AirPods. These sound a little bit better, but it's not worth, it's not worth the other stuff. Hey, look, that LED is blowing out the camera. So, my big issue with these is they don't fit that well, at least not to my ears. Like, they're trying to do the same shallow tip thing that the airpods do with the oval tip which you know it's fine 
but like finding figuring out which tips fit has been a bit of a nightmare and they're still not great like i don't like wearing these for a long period of time and then there's all the other stuff that goes with them like the big thing about these was they are cheap active noise cancelling and i don't think i've turned the active noise cancelling on since the first like two days i used it i tried taking these to work i was hoping like maybe these will be a nice little uh, alternative option to my airpods but they're just not like the anc might as well not exist it's really sad because they do sound good they do look good but just all the extra bits around them just kind of make it fall flat sad because i was really excited about those and finally in this section probably the probably the closest thing you're going to see to a hot take in this video the Tanch Jim Tanyas. The Darlings. Under 20 quid. Same kind of bullet style. Look, it's the bag they come in. Same kind of bullet style as the ZSEs. But they are nice looking. Like, I'm not going to lie. But also, like, these hard edges on here. It makes it so that they don't really fit my... They're not comfortable in my ears. Like, they fit good, but they're not comfortable for long periods of time, so I end up not really using them. But this cable is excellent. Like, this thing is just smooth and doesn't tangle and it doesn't kink. It's, it's a really nice cable. And yeah, they, sa they sound good. Like, for 20 quid, not complaining at all. And I'll pull them out occasionally, but there's another pair of headphones in this same style that I like better that cost less. And if you've been following, like, the super hype headphones of the year, you probably know what those are going to be. Right, so, those headphones that I like more than the Tanya's, the Quarks, the Moondrop Quarks. Look, there's a Moondrop on it, if it'll focus. There it is. The Moondrop Quarks, very small box, and where did I put them? There they are. Ugh. Look, it's another bag. These are tiny. Like, the fact that these are so small means that they fit my ears great. Like, nothing about this. There's no edge here to scrape on the inside of your ears, as happens with the Tanya's with some of the tips I tried. The cable isn't as nice. The cable is very rubbery. Like, it's a very rubbery cable. It likes to hold its shape, but... These were £11. They were nearly half the price of the Tanya's, and I think they sound better. They've got a bit more bass. They're not losing stuff in the treble. Like, honestly, if you buy these or the Tanya's, you're going to get a great pair of headphones. Like, you're going to get something that you really like. But my preference and my, like, how I like to hear music I think the quarks are better. That is me taking my place in that war. You do have to, like, ball them up really tightly to get them into this bag, though. Like, this bag is stupidly small. You saw the Tanya's bag earlier. Like, that thing is about twice the size of these. For a pair of headphones that are around the same size. That's part of why the cable on these has just held its shape. All right, small box. We now present an unnecessarily large box. <laughs> the Theo FA1. Look at the size of this thing. 
is huge. Like, I think there's only one pair of headphones I've bought that have a bigger box than this. Here they are. And they come with this... They call it a waterproof case, but I don't see the point in having it waterproof other than unless you're like carrying it around in the rain or you're putting it in like a gym bag or pool bag. But here they are. Single balanced armature headphones. They look great. This cable is excellent. Uh, the one thing I do wish is I wish this little um, rubber cable tie, I wish you could take that off. Like it's hard connected to the cable there. I wish you could take that off. I'm not a huge fan of it, but you know, such as it is. So yeah, these are single balanced armature, which is hilarious because they do the clear thing and there's basically nothing in there. It's literally just two wires going from the connector up here down to the driver down here. It's really funny. But these are f these are funny. Like, I don't use these very much, but they have no base. Which you'd expect. Like, balanced armatures aren't great at base. But these have no base. Like, I, I gave them my big test of putting um, some pendulum on with these. Some, like, big drum and bass. And I barely laughed. Like, roared with laughter at the absolute lack of bass that came out of these. <laughs> it was really funny. And yeah, they're super chill. They're super comfortable. Like they're absolutely effortless to wear for long periods of time because they don't have that bass fatiguing you. There's bass you can hear, but there's no thump to it. They're very we they're very weird. And that's why I like them. Like I like weird. I have no other pair of headphones that sound like this. Which is what gives them a spot on the table. And finally, in this section of headphones that I like. The meme. The Z E X. I bought these. Pretty much as soon as I saw them announced, because I was so curious. Firstly, they look awesome. It's like this wavy pattern here. All the guts inside. So, there are a couple of things I don't like about these. Firstly, the tips that they ship with are absolute garbage. I took these to work and I was getting wind buffering walking through the kitchen. It was painful. They barely block out any noise, so these don't leave the house anymore. But the sound is super fun. Like, it is super intense. You have to turn the volume down a load because they're super loud. Like, if I plug these into my iPod and I listen on my regular volume, I will blow my ears out. They are that loud. It needs to be about quarter volt, like 25% volume. And it's still super intense, like big bass, big treble. Eh, the mids are kind of left to fend for themselves. But again, just like the FA ones, I don't own a single pair of headphones that sound like this. Which makes them super fun when I want that big thumpy bass sound with the big sharp treble. It's like, I think Critical said... They're different, but they're not good. And I think I'd agree with that. But they're super fun. And I love that. I, I, I don't regret buying them. Especially not for like 17 quid. Okay. That's all... Strange individual tiers, no man's land, stuff I like, stuff I dislike, stuff that's uninteresting. This is now the straight up top three. My three favourite pair of head pairs of headphones that I bought this year. <laughs> and to be honest, as I'm looking at the three that I've got here behind the camera, 
I am still kind of undecided about what order these go in. But the other big box is coming in. The Tin P1. They're planar IEM. This lovely leatherette. I think it's leatherette. Lovely magnetic leatherette case. Look at that. They are beautiful. Just beautiful things. This cable, like, talking to a friend who had, who bought these as well. Like, we both bought into the hype, basically. And he was like, yeah, the cable isn't great. And I kind of see where he's coming from. Like, it's this very, like, rough weave. I prefer the cable on the T2s. Like, that, it's super smooth. It doesn't tangle. It's super easy to pull apart. This one, maybe not so much, but... Like, I love how these sound. And, yeah, the timeless, the 7 hertz timeless has kind of stolen their thunder, really, in the last couple weeks. But, I really like these. The only problem I have with them is they don't sound that great out of many of my portable players. So, if I'm using these, I'm going to be sat on my sofa, I'm going to have the MacBook open, and I'm going to have my amp connected to it, Theo E10K. So they are a faff to use for me, which is why they sit down here. I love how they sound, but they're just a bit too much of a faff to use. So I end up not using them as much as I'd like. And, you know, these other two get close enough to how good these sound. They get close enough while being way easier to use all the time. All right, <laughs> number two, the identity crisis. The, Z the ZEX Pros. These are the CRNs. This is Crinicle's KZ. And honestly, when I first got these, not knowing not knowing the Crinicle involvement, because nobody did, because they intentionally kept it secret, these were disappointing to me right out the box. Because I was hoping for a more refined... I was hoping for a more refined version of the ZEX with that big bass, big treble, but, you know, not sacrificing the mids quite as much. But they're not that. They're, you know, they are more balanced, more detailed, you know, from Crinicle's tuning. And... As Dank Pods has said, expectation is the gateway to disappointment. And the fact that these didn't sound how I was hoping for out the box really soured me on them initially. But, you know, obviously, after the initial shipment goes out, the critical connection becomes... The critical connection becomes known. And suddenly I've got a new... I have a new lens with which to think about these. So I put them back in and I start giving them another try with this new context of what their intent is. And I've really warmed to these. Like, I do think they sound great. And for like under 40 quid... I understand that not everyone's going to like them. Like Crinicle's tuning is a very is kind of a particular thing. And 
you know, I I do like more of a V in my stuff, but as something to have around that I can use, like these sound really good. And unlike the ZEXs, they don't fit like crap. So I can actually use them outside. Amazing stuff. Also, it's the exact same cable, which I like, because I do like that cable, this kind of flattened thing. And the number one. The best headphones I bought this year, or my favourites at least. The Arias. I bought these at the end of summer on the mindset that, you know, I have money. I have a bit of money. Let's get a really nice pair of IEMs. And God, are the Arias nice. It's like you only have to look at them. Like the gold inlay, the black metal body. Like they're so comfortable. They sound so good, like, you know, where did I put it? There it is. You know, frequency response graph on the back. They've got that little, they've got that little V, you know, the little bump in the bass, the little bump in the upper mids and treble. And they're just really nice, like, really nice, really detailed, like, Going back to Crinical again, he called them a cheaper Starfield. People, I don't, I've never used the Starfield. People I know that do say that's pretty much bang on. So, you know, 70 quid for what is probably one of the most popularly acclaimed IEMs ever made. Yeah, I'll take that. And this cable is great. It's like, it's like cloth and it just dangles freely at all times the one thing I don't like is this like serial number on the back of the uh, uh, join bit it says moon drop on the other side like why do you need to have that why is that necessary to be there it just kind of takes away from the whole aesthetic Look, it says Aria on the top. If I can get the cable out of the way. Ooh. But yeah. The Arias. The P1s. And the ZDX Pro slash CRN. I think if you're buying them now, they're only selling them as the CRN. Which is kind of cool. It means I have this weird, it means I have this weird, like, kind of rare packaging for them. Because this makes no mention of Critical on it. But yes, those are the headphones I bought this year. And I kind of went crazy, especially with cheaper stuff. Like, kind of like, if anything cheap looked or sounded interesting if anything cheap looked or sounded interesting to me i probably at least considered buying it but going into 2022 i think my approach is going to be much more about just buying stuff that i that I think is going to represent an advance, like stuff that is going to be actively good, not just, you know, stuff that's cheap, but might be interesting. So I think like the first pair of headphones I have my eye on are the Moondrop SSRs, which I was, I've looked at and I've had in my ba my shopping cart on AliExpress so many times over the course of the year and I've never pulled the trigger. And I think once we hit January, I'm going to do that because, you know, a company leaving its tuning comfort zone is very interesting. Even if, you know, even if some people say they're not very good. But yeah, thanks for listening to me ramble on about headphones for about 20, 25 minutes. 
I'll see you around.